What's up everybody? My name is Vincent. Welcome to Cryptolution where we talk about everything under the moon in the crypto universe. Today is Tuesday, August 13th. In today's video, I want to talk about runes. Not just any specific rune, just the entire rune ecosystem itself. Why is it really important to understand where the rune ecosystem is regarding market cap? How's the market cap or unique holders compared to BRC20s? And also why it's really important to focus on miners. We wanna kind of pay tribute to the miners that mine Bitcoin, that mine the transactions, that validate the blocks. And I wanna share with you my personal thoughts on why right now, runes are very early and whatever you're exposed to, whatever rune you are bought into or have in your portfolio, well, this is a video you want to understand to better position yourself in this bull cycle. So with that said, as always, be sure to smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to join our Patreon page and please be careful with any of the scammers down in the comments below. I will never reach out via WhatsApp, Telegram, direct messaging, or email. So please be careful and invest safely. So guys, girls, let's get right into it. So overall, when you're looking at specific runes, there are a ton out there. Now there's Arsic. Now Arsic, also known as the rune coin, has actually pumped over 17% over the past 24 hours. This used to be close to around three sets. Now it's up all the way to 7.3 sets. Dog of the Moon, one of the most predominant communities and also meme coins within the Rune ecosystem, down 5%, priced at around 4.8 sets. Then you have Billion Dollar Cat, another meme community that's actually very huge in my personal opinion. This community has grown substantially. And what's really interesting is that this Rune was etched around 72,000. When you think of Dog of the Moon, it's number three. Rune coin number eight. So the fact that this is even etched way further on in terms of numbers number count, it still has one of the best communities out there within the Rune ecosystem. And that's something you should really pay attention to. Now, when we look at the Rune total mark cap, hovering around 770 million. Remember, we used to be above $2 billion, which we saw not too long ago back in late May, early June. So could we revisit those levels of a mark cap? I absolutely think so. Because really, when you think about it, people are just trying to understand what runes are. We're only four months into the runes birth, which started in April after the Bitcoin halvening. But what you cannot ignore is the amount of growth within runes. So if you look at the specific diagram, if you notice the amount of, and this is regarding all runes, okay? It's not just like a specific rune. This is the entire rune ecosystem. There are roughly 821,000 unique holders. They can have a different variety of different runes. Now, when you look at BRC20s, which again was the old standard of fungible tokens on top of Bitcoin, they roughly have around 763,000 holders. So I'm actually seeing the amount of unique holders within runes grow while BRC 20s tends to stay sideways. And the reason for that is because runes are basically built on top of Bitcoin, while BRC 20s are built on top of ordinals, which ordinals are built on top of Bitcoin. So I think really people are really starting to understand what runes are, but hopefully it's more than just a meme society. And so people are wondering if runes are just going to be more than memes or if it's going to be something else. Now, something from OR data, which by the way, you should follow this person if you haven't already, compared my chart, compared runes and BRC20 holders. Now, what's really important is this is what he said. Now, rune holders outnumber BRC20 holders. Let's dive deeper into the data for more insights regarding the current state of fungible token holders on Bitcoin. Now, the Venn diagram below concisely presents all the facts. Now, currently, 1.39 million distinct addresses hold fungible tokens. 824,000 addresses hold runes, with 626 of those exclusively just holding runes. Now, this means that 70% of the holders do not own any BRC20 tokens. Now, regarding the 766,000 addresses that hold BRC20 tokens, well, with that, 568,000 exclusively hold BRC20s, while 74% of BRC20 holders do not hold any runes. Now, if you look at the 197,000, these addresses have holdings in both fungible token standards, both BRC20s and runes. But no matter what, rune stands out to be the best one by far, because even though there are people that hold both tokens, people that are exclusively for runes are outnumbering BRC20 holders. But some people are still very bearish around runes. And we're going to talk about the FUD. We're going to address some of the FUD that's out there. I'm going to share with you my personal opinion because on this channel, we want to be completely transparent. We want you all to be better investors. We want you all to learn in this field. So Min Dynasty, who owns an Azuki on Ethereum, also an influencer within the space, he says memes on ETH, this is probably like Shiba Inu, Pepe token, were what runes on Bitcoin were supposed to be. 
So he's basically saying all these tokens such as the billion dollar cat or rune coin or dog out of the moon were supposed to be like tokens such as Pepe or Shiba Inu or any other token like Floki that's coming onto their blockchain. So he's actually fudding this, even saying and responding unneeded because somebody said, what's your long-term thesis on runes? So basically he's very bearish on it. And I understand that no one really likes when there's not as much volume or not as much interest or if their portfolio is going down. Even the block made a report saying the runes protocol struggles with the fee revenue as Bitcoin conservative framework limits growth. Now, when you look at the specific chart right here, which is what they're addressing, is that this green section is the rune fees, meaning that miners possibly don't even get as much mining Bitcoin rewards from the rune ecosystem. But what's really important that I want to share with you as well is if you just remove the miners out of the perspective, you can see that still runes make up a majority of Bitcoin transactions by type, exceeding ordinals, BRC20s, and other things, possibly Bitcoin transactions. But regardless, I think miners are very important for this ecosystem. And what's really cool is that right now, there's actually a panel. It's called Does Bitcoin Care About Kamala? Now in this panel, which is actually live right now, but make sure to go to Mario Nalfall to see the specific Twitter space. Now, when I'm listening to it, they're actually talking about miners and people are asking, what are miners needing right now? And there is some kind of thought out there that miners need some incentive. Now, in this specific panel, they were talking about the Bitcoin halvening. So ever since the Bitcoin halvening, which is when runes were born, we saw a huge spike in transaction fees because runes started coming out and people were minting, etching runes and just buying runes on secondary markets. And that ended up rewarding some of these miners heavily. But since then, we've seen a dwindling effect of not that many transactions to what the miners think is actually great. And as you can see, it has dwindled over time, even especially the past three months has dwindled over time. Now, if I scroll up, you can see even with rune fees, yeah, rune fees definitely dominated during the Bitcoin halving. But look how microscopic it is right now, because if you look within the past month, it isn't that much and it does seem like it's dwindling down. And the reason I bring this up is because, not because I'm bearish on runes. It just means that right now, the people who are smart, the people who are the sharks, the people who are established Bitcoin OG veterans, they're buying the dips. Usually when you're seeing low transaction volume, it's because you're not seeing a mass majority of retail investors or mass adoption with it. But the people who have a ton of liquidity on the side, these sharks or these whales, they end up having a little bit of exposure by just having maybe less than 0.5% of the portfolio and buying into runes so that when things start to pump, they will sell or take profit on retail investors. But it does not mean as you as a retail investor should be just sitting on the side. You got to think like a shark. So when there's not interest into the runes ecosystem or ordinals or BRC 20s, you should really pay attention to these fields because since for me, I know that these are gonna stick around for a while, they're not gonna die, they're here, they're here to stay. You're gonna have to wanna look into which ones you want to invest in, which ones you think will have longevity and will have an epic comeback. And most importantly, focus on the community. Which community is talking about their specific portfolio the most? If it's an ordinal collection, if it's a rune token, if it's a BRC20, focus on which community is the strongest because that's when people are gonna focus on that specific token or that specific ordinal and they're gonna wanna cover that in the next bull market. And here's a great example. So Forbes has been recently reporting on ordinals and runes. So recently an article that was just published today they made an article saying the Bitcoin Renaissance unlocking trillions in value. They're talking about ordinals, runes, specifically in this specific article on top of Bitcoin layer two options who are building on top of Bitcoin. The reason you need to pay attention to this is because I'm not saying Forbes is the bull signal flag for everybody to start buying into the certain things. But what I noticed is that Forbes and like Motley Fools, they talk about things to see if they get engagement. They wanna see if there is a community or if there is interest in their articles that they are publishing. And what happens is, is that they may not predict the future, but the fact is they're paying attention to something because they realize this could potentially be something very huge. And they will be at the forefront if this is correct. If the trillion dollars in values in Bitcoin's market cap 
is unlocked within the Bitcoin ecosystem with the layer twos, with the runes, the ordinals, BRC twenties. And they even updated their digital assets. They created a category called top dog themed cryptocurrencies today by market cap. And dog is ranked number six place, which is pretty big. Now, when you look at this, this is the only coin that has a Bitcoin blockchain built with it. And with all these other testnet coins, they're built on Ethereum, Solana, even BNB. This will definitely flip all of those. It's just a matter of time. Now you have to position yourself in the right way. For me, I believe that DOG is gonna perform very well. And I've spoken about this specific token on our channel almost religiously because the reason I talk about it, because I know for a fact, for me, that it's gonna do really well. That when Bitcoin pumps, and I even asked Jat DBT around this, is that if Bitcoin pumps to around 100,000, at least 100,000, because that's what the sentiment in the market is predicting in this next bull cycle, what would the DOG rune token price be. So JatGPT had to say that if Bitcoin hits 100,000, you can see the dog rune token either 2x to 10x its current price. But what if Bitcoin were to hit 150,000? They're saying that it would possibly be 10x to even 20x the current price. What if Bitcoin was to hit 200,000, which is this euphoric level? Then that means this token could possibly reach 20x to even 50x, which would be absolutely crazy. But what I think is really important is not any of these different price predictions. It's the number two part, which is community and hype. It's all about the community. How large is the crypto community capturing the attentions of retail investors, normies, mainstream media? DOG by far is that token. It checks everything from community, engagement, virality, also market trends, also demand, supply and demand. It's got everything programmed within the token from the get-go. Now in the end, as my conclusion and statement, there are a ton of rune tokens out there, but runes and ordals are not going anywhere. And also runes are absolutely not dead. We're just seeing a little bit of a quiet period, which is completely normal. This happens with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin was at 15,000 last year, no one was really talking about Bitcoin. All of a sudden, Bitcoin's at 60, 70,000 out of nowhere because we had BlackRock and all these other ETS focusing on Bitcoin. So the same thing can be applied regarding the Ring ecosystem. It's not going anywhere. So with that said, let me know your thoughts down below and I cannot wait to read them. So as always, be sure to smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to join our Patreon page to receive all of our alpha calls and trades regarding DOG and also the Rune ecosystem. Until then, see you guys and girls next time.